Charles, could you ever see a hybrid proof of work proof of stake project? Yes, I've been in the space long enough to remember PeerCoin, which was the first. Good old Sunny. <laughs> what do you think about having a more than one node client? I couldn't agree more. We need a polyglot culture. You guys, you do need one. Let's do it. Open source project. How about that? When can we see you again with Maria Bartoma on Fox Business News? That was great to see you on the national stage. Awesome interview to reach a broader audience. It was a lot of fun. She's a wonderful person, and I really have a lot of fun on our show. So I'll keep coming on as long as they have me. Charles, can you shout at me out, man? You got me through my depression. Well, Antonio, here's to you. Seriously, though, Planescape Torment sounds rad. Why aren't people making video games like that anymore? Well, it starts because the internet ruined it. Um, red letter media aside. Uh, the thing is that they are. Uh, just the density of video games has increased enormously. And there's many games that have come out in recent memory that have rich, intricate plots. Um, the problem is that if you have, you have to balance the reality of certain gameplay mechanics with the desire to tell a story. So, uh, you know, Planescape Torment, it's an open world in a certain respect, but it's not. You have well defined maps, you have a well defined plot, you have a direction and a decision tree for the player to go on, but ultimately, there's a finite amount of endings that are fully enumerated. And it's just a rich, vibrant story. And the person is playing it as much for the story as they are the gameplay mechanics. So yes, you have to overcome things and win certain battles and these types of things. But ultimately, you're playing to find out what happens and what influence you have over the world in which these things happen. Another game that I absolutely loved was Arcanum. It came from Troika Games. And uh, there, it was just an extraordinary open-world Victorian steampunk world that had a hybrid of magic and technology. Phenomenal game. Absolutely phenomenal. And I always thought to myself, why can there not be a sequel? You know? But there's all kinds of creative new things that are coming out all the time. New games. Um, Event Zero, for example, where you actually have like real conversations with a computer terminal and try to figure out how to convince it to help you get home. Um, there's really cool sandbox games that have come out. Uh, there's, you know, mega triple A studio games like Red Dead Redemption too. And, uh, you know, things like the newest, uh, Elder Scrolls that's coming out, which are obviously huge. They have an amazing, like your protagonist getting tuberculosis and dying in the game. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Pretty amazing, right? So, you know, these things still do exist, but the problem is the gameplay mechanics are, so involved uh, and the graphics are so involved and the and the combinatorial explosion of the decision tree is so involved it really is an extremely involved affair and it costs 50 to 100 million dollars to make a triple a game where it used to cost five million dollars to make a game in that category and it's only getting more and more involved in that respect so there will be more like planescape torment and um, people will make them uh, maybe I will, uh, but uh, they're still doing it. Don't give up hope. <laughs> 